Oliver's mind was filled with a million thoughts. He found a highway and followed it. He saw no cars. No cars drove past him. He figured that it was Highway 112, but he was not sure. He was not totally sure where he was. However, he hoped that he could find a town or gas station that could get some supplies and help from. It was early in the morning, the sun just rising over the horizon. There was not a tree in sight, only bare wilderness. Oliver put one foot in front of each other. For so long, he did not know how long he had been walking. If not for the sun, he probably would have thought that he had been walking for longer than he actually was. It was not until the sun had fully risen above the horizon that Oliver finally saw a sign. Tollock Town, 12 miles. Oliver went to the other side of the road to see the other sign. Altiston, 21 miles. Had he really walked over 20 miles last night? Oliver did not think he had walked for that long. But Oliver could not think it much more. He was very tired, hungry, and thirsty. Even though he now knew how far away he was from food, the knowledge was almost worse than not knowing. The thought of walking 12 more miles made him not even want to try, but he knew that he had no choice. If he didn't keep walking, then where else could he go for food? The wilderness around him was bare and dead. There could be nothing he could eat. And so he continued his journey to Tollock Town. And soon, after a bit more walking, he saw the welcome sign to the town of Tollock Town and saw a gas station. Thinking about the possible food at the station, Oliver walked in and found some food. He grabbed a bag of crackers and a soda. He also grabbed a water. As he walked to the front counter to purchase the food, he noticed a specific car pull into the gas station. It was a police car with the name of Altiston on it. He crouched down, hiding. He watched as a man walked into the store. Hello, said the cashier. How can I help you? I'm looking for a man who was on the run, said the man. Oliver recognized his voice. It was the ch chief of the Altiston police. He has a black beard and, a bl and black hair. About six feet tall, may look dirty. Oliver realized why he was here. He continued to crouch down, listening to what was being said. I'm sorry, officer, but I have not seen such a man. But I'll call 911 if I find him. No, do not do that. This needs to be private. Let me give you another number to call if you find the suspect. It will be quicker. Silence. Oliver figured that the chief was giving the number to the cashier. Oliver tried thinking about how he could leave. He knew that he couldn't show his face to the cashier. He would be reported. He had to tell someone. Oliver decided that he should try calling the police. It was his last hope. He noticed a phone near the cashier. Knowing that he couldn't ask for the phone from the cashier, Oliver decided to wait for an opportunity. Oliver continued to hide, waiting for both the chief and the cashier to leave the counter. Finally, the chief left and drove away. Oliver waited a few more minutes. Finally, the cashier left the counter, heading over to the store's restroom. This was the opportunity. Oliver quickly and quietly walks over to the counter. He grabbed the phone and dialed 911 on it. Oliver whispered, 911, hello, can you help me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. How can I help you, said the dispatcher. Okay, my name is Oliver Carnegie. My family has been captured by a group of people who call themselves the accusers. They have forced me to run away. I'm currently in a gas station in Tallock Town. My family is in Altiston. Okay, so there's been a kidnapping. And you say that you are Oliver Carnegie, as in the mayor of Altiston? Yes, and my family has been kidnapped. I need help getting them back. Okay, sir, let me get in contact with the Altiston Police Department. No, don't do that. They are part of the accusers. What do you mean, sir? This is their city. They have jurisdiction, said the dispatcher. Hey, came a voice. Oliver looked behind him. It was the cashier. He had just come out of the restroom. It was the suspect that officer was looking for. Oliver dropped the phone and jumped over the counter. He ran straight to the, for the door. The cashier grabbed the phone and dialed for the chief of the police's number that he gave him. Oliver ran into the field, away from any roads or any one. He ran for a solid five minutes, sprinting as fast as he could until he couldn't run anymore. Oliver stopped and sat down. He felt his pockets. It was the food from the store. 
He didn't pay for it. Oliver shrugged it off. There was no way that he could go back there and pay for it. He grabbed the water bottle and took a sip. He sat there drinking his water, trying to recollect his thoughts. He knew why the accusers were after him. They wanted the book. Oliver knew that they couldn't have it. Oliver also knew that he had to get his family back by himself. No one could help him. Oliver began to think about a plan to get his family back, how to fix this whole problem and situation. He had only himself to solve it. He had to get back Altiston. He had to get back his family. He had to do it, no matter the cost.